Zdrasti, friends in Bulgaria. Kaz vam se Joseph Kursky. And I'm rather fond of, let me show you my shirt, geography. Geography, my favorite subject. Geography. And I know you are fond of geography as well. In fact, no matter what separates us, kilometers, oceans, mountains, etc., we are all bound together, aren't we, by a common desire to see geography strengthened, supported, and actually taught and enjoyed by students all over the world. And as they become future decision makers, to actually use geographic thinking in their everyday decisions. So, I send you my greetings to Adi, uh, Alex, Lubo, Antonia, Nicola, from North America, and the USA, Joseph Kursky. What we did last month uh, with uh, Adi over at the Geographical Association, we, was, we looked at uh, a tool called ArcGIS Explorer and ArcGIS Online. What these tools allow us to do is to, to map things, but not just map them as in the case of finding out where things are, but actually look at the spatial relationships of things like earthquakes and volcanoes to plate tectonics, or human migration, or eco-regions, or weather versus stream gauging stations. All that sort of thing can be analyzed within ArcGIS Online, a wonderful tool. So, Dubej Dane, Dobar Den, Nazdrave, and uh, see you later. Let's keep in touch about geography. Let's start by making a map with ArcGIS Online. In a web browser, pull up ArcGIS.com. Start a new map. Let's measure the distance between North America and Bulgaria. Notice that we get the Great Circle Route, just like if you were flying in an airplane. 9,196 kilometers. Let's add some data. How about climate? There's that famous Keppen map that's in all standard geography textbooks. Let's add that to the map and pull up a legend. We can see some global climate patterns here. Let's take a look at what it looks like by me. Okay, this is a cold, arid steppe at the bottom where we can look at changes over time. We've got a couple of things that cover Bulgaria. One is this one, which is the same kind of eco-region as the one, and the climatic region as the one I'm in right now, the cold, arid steppe, but you also have the warm, temperate hot summer fully humid CFA. So you've got a CFA and a BSK. Let's take a look at one more variable and that is how about some natural hazards. Let's add how about earthquakes. Now I've just added the recent earthquakes and volcanoes. So if I click here I've got Ah Stromboli last updated August 2011 what about this? Probably Mount Etna. Yes, ongoing activity. Just erupted last month. Let me scroll over here just to the southeast of you all. 4.4 uh, magnitude earthquake on May 8, which was yesterday. Let's go over by me now. Over to the USA, western USA. I'm over here in Colorado. And uh, no seismic activity right now. No active volcanoes. But out here in California, quite a few, as you would expect. Even one over here in Arkansas in the middle of the country. This is not far from the New Madrid Fault. The New Madrid Fault is right here in this area of southeast Missouri. In 1811 and 1812, the New Madrid Fault uh, moved three times, and it was the largest recorded earthquake in North America, right about there. Let's zoom back out and do one more thing. Let's add some World Bank data so we can look at uh, variables by country. World Bank age and population. Fascinating data set. Let's go ahead and pull up a map legend there. Scoot this over so you can see it. Alright, let's go ahead and take a look at the different layers that we've got available 
We've got percent population working age. What I'm really interested in is how about population growth? Population growth rates from 1960 to 1980. We can see the, pot, the pattern there. Let's take a look, though, more recently. How about let's look at the 2000 to 2020. We can see that the growth rates have decreased. Let's zoom in and take a look at our respective countries. Okay, the growth rate here is 1.03. And according to these data sets from the World Bank, uh, actually it looks like it's decreasing in your region. Here's a map of total births per woman. And let's click on these different countries and get some data sets. Over here it's 2.03. Over there it's 1.24. 1.31 in Hungary. 1.27 in Romania. I suspect it's a little higher in Turkey. Yes, it is. Let's say it's over 2 in Albania, to over 2 in Greece, over 2 in Turkey. No, it's only 1.25 in Greece. I stand corrected. Okay, interesting. So, what we've done here is we've used ArcGIS Online to look at several different variables. We started off with uh, climate, and we looked at uh, hazards, and we finished up with uh, some demographic characteristics. Again, Web-based GIS is a wonderful tool to be using to explore our excellent and varied planet. Thanks.